beautiful day back here behind the Greenbelt Nature Center in our wondrous forest. Capturing the wind, maybe some bird song. And speaking of birds. Hi there, everybody. Welcome to our monthly story time. Welcome. Um, I'm so glad to see you all again. My name is Christopher Rommel, and I'm an environmental educator right here at the beautiful Nature Center here on Rockland Avenue. And it's finally sunny. I can do this outside. Finally, I've been doing this indoors all winter, but thankfully the sun's holding up. It's a little windy. It's a little cloudy, but we'll take it. It's been cold these past few days. I'm sure the animals don't like that either. Got my sweater on. I'm all ready to go. So on this one, we're going to get moving a little bit. But before I do, our topic today is about ducks. So where might have you seen ducks before? In Willowbrook, at a pond near you? Well, after this, you're going to be able to tell your friends and your family all about these ducks. And you might even, tell, you might even uh, uh, impress some of them with all the new facts that you've learned. So why don't you waddle over the table with me, and then we'll start our presentation. So here, to help me, I have my friend Donnie the Duck. Not Donald, that guy is in Florida. This is Donnie. Don't get him confused. So Donnie here is a mallard duck, and you'll see him at Willowbrook Park, swimming in the pond, maybe flying, hanging out with his friends. And uh, did you know ducks are actually semi-aquatic? Can you say that with me? I know it's a tough one, semi-aquatic. What does that mean? Well, it means that this animal, this duck, can live both on land, on solid land, and in the water. I know you, hear, you might hear some water from our creek coming in, that he can live in there as well and find some food, clean himself. Um, we can only swim in water, but we can't live in water like the ducks do. And uh, you might want, you might even call them semi-aquatic, aquatic? Uh, I know it's current, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but it's just a joke. So they're semi-aquatic. The next fact I'd like to bring to you is that they are omnivores. Can you say that with me too? Omnivores. So that means that ducks can eat both plant life and meat. Do you know someone else that can do both that, eat meat and plants? I can do it, you can do it, camera person can do it, yep. we, <laughs> unless you're a vegetarian. But anyway, we're all omnivores. We have the choice of eating salads and meat. So that's a pretty cool thing that we all share in common with ducks. Now, you might notice that this duck looks a little different than ducks you might have seen, like Daffy or Donald, like they're all different colors. Well. The mallard is specifically green and brown on the front with a little bit of green on his wings. And the way you can tell between a male and a female is that, what do you think, what, actually, before I tell you, what do you think Donnie is, a male or a female, just by looking at the color? Well, males are typically more colorful and more brighter, so that might give you a clue that Donnie is a male. And uh, uh, the females will be a little bit duller, a little more brownish, and that's so they can uh, blend in with the nature over here. They need to blend in to survive from any of the predators, so they're real duller. The reason that Donnie here is so colorful is that he's trying to attract that mate. It's like putting on his best suit, his best Sunday suit, to waddle about and attract, the, the, attract his potential mate. Um, so female ducks are called hens. Can you say hens? Male ducks are called... They're called after a famous rapper right now. His, their names are Drakes, although they can't sing as well as Drake, I wouldn't think. And then baby ducks are called ducklings. Very easy to remember. Ducklings are the little birds, that, are the little ducks that you might see waddling about right behind their, their mama as they go into the pond. It's really cute how you see them waddling about. Speaking of waddling, can you waddle? I'll teach you right now. All you have to do is just stick your arms back like your feathers and then as you're walking, you want to bob your head back and forth and waddle about and kind of and kind of do that really fast, really fast. Can you do that fast? Can you do that slow, lazy waddle about? And then can you run around the room? Waddle, 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 waddle. <laughs> That's pretty good exercise right there. It also stretches out my arms there. That's how a duck moves. <laughs> as opposed to a pigeon that goes like this. They just go like this. I guess the birds are just like bobbing their head a lot. I guess they're listening to their own music in their head. <laughs> All right, so uh, another cool thing about ducks, actually, before I start that, what's the famous noise that ducks make? 
Do you know what duck, the sound ducks make? Is it woof? No, 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 that's embarrassing. That's not a duck. It's meow. No, no, they don't, they don't like water. Cats don't like water. Oh, that's right, quack. Quack, that's exactly right. Well, I have a little secret to tell you. I want you to come a little bit closer. I gotta tell you this. I don't want anyone to know about this. A lot of ducks don't quack. I'm sorry, I know. I don't want to tell you that. I'm sorry. I, 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 don't, I don't want to lie to you. I only tell the truth here. A lot of ducks don't quack. Um, uh, the females, the brown ones will quack. They do the quacking, but what is, what is uh, Donnie? What noise does he make? Um, Donnie, what noise do you make? I don't know, he's a little bit shy. So I actually do it for him. He's, he has a little cold in him today. But male ducks will actually sound like they have a really raspy voice. It's almost like a quack, but it's not the same. And I'm gonna do it for you out in public because I'm not afraid to embarrass myself. So hold on a minute, let me get that, that throat going. All right, so. Uh, <laughs> it's something like that. Or they can kind of do, do a little quick, a quick, it sounds like they're speaking as well. They can go. <laughs> it sounds like they're trying to speak like a chipmunk or something. But that's the way that they talk with their other duck friends. It's just a different way of speaking, like the way we speak. And now my throat hurts. Thanks, Donnie. <laughs> All right. Um, now, you know ducks have feathers, right? It covers all their bodies. Did you know that they're actually waterproof? If I went over here to the water and I dunked Donnie in, he would come out totally dry. A little bit wet, but it would come right off. How do you think that happens? Well, ducks clean themselves just like humans do. It's called preening with a P, not a C. Preening. So ducks will have a feather like this. This isn't a duck feather, but a feather like this. And just imagine I have a feather on me and this thing looks disheveled and disgusting and I'm walking around. This needs to be cleaned so I can fly and then so I can be waterproof. So if, what do you call this yellow thing on the front of a duck? Some of you might be called this. It starts with a B. It's called a bill. They use this to clean themselves. They have great oils that will clean the, the feather and make it nice and shiny and waterproof. They kind of go like this. They kind of nip their arm just like that. You want to do it with me, Donnie? You want to preen yourself as well? That's exactly how he does it. He nips all the feathers, he preens all the feathers on his body so he can be nice and clean and that he can be waterproof. So you see how this is a little disheveled right here on this side? This is what you want on this side, a lot more neater and cleaner. How, how do we preen ourselves every morning? We preen ourselves as well. You might be washing our face. Can you wash your face with me? Can you brush your teeth? Do both sides up and down. You might be flossing. How do you floss? You have this string out there. I know it's, I know it's a pain, but you gotta floss. We preen ourselves as well. So don't think that it's just ducks that have to take care of themselves. We have to take care of ourselves too. I do it every morning. My girlfriend makes me, just kidding. <laughs> um, uh, but um, yeah, but ducks preen to keep themselves nice and water, uh, waterproof so that they can fly and make sure that they're waterproof. And I've also forgot to mention, when ducks are on the pond, you might see a funny thing. Ducks might look like this, and then all of a sudden they show you their little butts like this. They're not, they're not showing you their butts, they're actually eating. So they're actually, can you do it with me? Do you want to try to touch your toes? Let's go over here. They go under the water and they just try to reach down as far as they can to get that food, to get all that food, that awesome, awesome plant life beneath them. And then that's so you can eat. And it looks really funny. <laughs> it does, it really does. You wanna do it with me, Don? You wanna show again? He might wiggle his butt a little bit. That's exactly how he'll feed underneath the water. Remember the move for later, because I'm gonna bring it up again. Put that back up there. I told you it's a little windy outside today. All right. Now the last thing I'd like to talk to you about is, actually second to last, the last thing I'd like to talk about is their feet. Now Donnie doesn't have his little feet out right now, so I have this other bird here to show you. Do you know what web feet are? We don't have web feet as humans. Ducks do. If you come a little closer, you see that ducks don't have actual toes. They're actually connected to each other. And why do you think this is? It has something to do with the water. 
if you went snorkeling or swimming in the ocean or in a pool around you, you know that flippers make you go a lot faster, a lot faster. And this is why ducks have webbed feet, so they can, uh, so they can swim a lot faster and catch any food before their friends do. And it's the cutest thing. They kind of look like this in the water, and then their little feet go like this as they go through the water. You got to check it out if you haven't already. It's, it's, it's the cutest thing. It looks like they're gliding against the water, but they're actually going like that. <laughs> And um, they actually don't feel the cold because there's no nerves in there. So they don't feel cold, they don't need socks just like us. They're perfectly fine in the cold. Now the last thing, truly the last thing I need to talk to you about before we go into our story time, I know you're all waiting. Um, if you go to Willowbrook Park or any other pond that has ducks, you might see some people feeding the wildlife, they might be tossing some bread to them. You're not allowed to do that. Please, we don't allow, that, uh, allow you guys to do that here, especially with bread. Now, bread, I'd say for a duck, is kind of like Halloween candy for a kid. You're gonna eat a lot of it, it tastes so good, it might be so good, and then it's all in your stomach and it does nothing for you, it makes you sick, it makes you wanna throw up. That's exactly what bread is to a duck. Bread is probably like the last thing you wanna feed to a duck. Now, um, if you have friends that do this, then you wanna educate them. I wanna show you what you can feed them. I know you're not supposed to feed them, but if you do, I want you to do it right. So there's actually a few different things that we have here. I got my Quaker oats. They love oats. It's very healthy for them. They like to make salads or like any greens. And they like uncooked rice, uncooked corn, uncooked peas. All this stuff is healthy for them and it'll actually give them the nutrition that they need. Just like we all like candy, but we actually need our greens and veggies and fruits and all the good stuff that we need. And also these things are smaller, so they're less likely to collect in the water and get moldy. That's true, yeah, exactly. They're sponges, basically. So thanks for that as well. So if you see someone feeding with bread, just kindly just tell them, that's not okay to do that. The ducks need something better. They deserve better, don't you, Johnny? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now. On to our story time. I picked this one out because it was very cute to me. This will get a little bit closer. This one is called All My Little Duck All My Little Ducklings. Remember, ducklings is for the, the little uh, the baby ducks. You all see all of them playing. Alright, sorry about that. We start our book if I could do it. We are live people, but mistakes happen. <laughs> We start our scene out in a peaceful little pond with our duck family. Sun's just rising and they're about to start their day. Also, I forgot we're going to do a little bit of moving during this. So if you can stand up, if you need to sit, that's okay too. All my little dumplings waking with the light. Now you see the family start to wake up. I actually have a question. Out of all the ducklings, which one do you see yourselves being? Bright, early. <laughs> out of bed early, looking at the sun, or staying fast asleep in their bed because it's cozy. For me personally, I'd be this one right here, staying cozy right next to mom because it's so warm. Everyone else can wake up before me. Twisting, swishing, flapping feet, wiggle, wiggle, waggle. So just like them, we're gonna use our feet to wiggle, 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 wiggle. Right foot, then left foot, wiggle, waggle, wiggle, waggle. And then they were also twisting and swishing, so you want to go back and forth just like this, like you're getting out of bed. Oh, it feels good to stretch, especially when you're older. Also, old people need to stretch. <laughs> Get a lot of cracks and unnatural noises. So all the ducks are swishing and wiggling and waggling. As the mother preens herself, you see that? All my little ducklings waddle to the water. Scurry, hurry, plunk! So we're gonna waddle, scurry, hurry, and plunk. All right, so remember, waddle positions. Arms back, feet, feet across, and then bob back and forth. Waddle, 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 and you see the water. You're gonna plunk and you're gonna jump. Plunk! And then you're gonna swim like a duck. All right. Flipping, dipping, splatter, splash. Paddle in the pond, so ducks like to have fun too. 
So just imagine you're in the pond, trying to splash your friends. Go ahead, bend down and splash them. Splash, make whirlpools. Go ahead, splash everyone. Go left, right, left, right. Get them all with water. Remember, they're waterproof. They won't be wet for long. See this one all the way down in the water. It looks like he's feeding. Excuse me. Heads are in the water. Tails are to the sun. Topsy-turvy, upside down. Dibble, dibble, dabble. So remember this one. We just did this a couple minutes ago. I, remember, I told you to remember it. You're going to try to reach your toes like you're reaching for the food underneath the water. Ready? And down. Reach those toes. Oh, yeah. Your butt's in the air. <laughs> can you keep it for a few more seconds? I know I can. One, two, three. Oh. That was a good stretch. This is full body. This is for the adults too. This isn't just for the kids. <laughs> personal hygiene or personal uh, fitness is essential. And you see them reaching down for all the fish and all the grain beneath the water. This guy's looking for the frog right there. <laughs> Apologies, these pages are tough to turn. All my little ducklings paddling to the shore, skimming, swimming. Picking, plucking, nibble, nibble, munch. Now, can you munch with me? Can you bite like a duck? Like, except they use their beaks. Go, my little ducklings. Wander, wander, ramble and roam. They're very curious. They're just new to the world, so they want to explore their environment. What will they find? Peeping, squeaking, cackle, quack. Ducklings by the barn. And you see they're looking up because everything's bigger than them. You need to look up too, like you're a little duckling. Stretch your neck out. What's that tree right there? Oh yeah, well look at that cloud right there. That's nice, that's awesome. Stretch that neck out. We can't see any ducks yet. Maybe some geese soon, but. Ducklings in the orchard, chased by buzzing bees. Now what do we normally do when we see bees? Run! You gotta run, you gotta waddle away fast, you gotta run, you gotta waddle, 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 because the bees are over here. Oh, they're over there. You gotta waddle back over here. It's over there too. Oh, they're in your hair. You gotta get them on the table. I think they're gone. The bees can be harsh sometimes, but they're gone for now. I'm working up a sweat. Plunk, plunk, splish, splosh. Back for one more swim. So right now they're back with mom, done exploring. Remember how they swim? All my little ducklings muddle through the reeds, mumble, stumble, bump. So kind of waddle like you're tired and lazy and you wanna to go to bed. That's how they feel right now. We cuddle, we nuzzle, and we snuggle, sleeping on our nest. So last, you go to sleep. Whew, now catch your breath. <laughs> Good job, everyone, for all, that, for all that moving. Oh, man, I'm, I'm definitely ready for my day. <laughs> you should do this every day when you wake up. That's how you get your body ready for the daily actions, just like a duck. I really like this book because it shows that ducks aren't too different from us. They do the same things that we do. They explore, they swim, they, they, uh, they, um, they, get, they run away from bees, <laughs> just like I would if that would happen. And uh, we, and I like to do stretches just like a duck. They definitely teach me personal fitness. Um, we're all, you're gonna need it one day when you grow up. Ask your parents. All right. So that was a lovely book by Monica Wellington. Our last, our last uh, thing on this story time will be our craft. We always end with the craft. It's one of my favorite things to do. I love to find new things to do. And this month is no exception to the duck because I have made. Donnie into a <laughs> into a construction paper duck, and this is not like a, no ordinary ordinary duck. Uh, this duck can fly. You know how I made him do that? He can flap his wings, just like that. He can fly if he wanted to. I made his arms or his I'm sorry his feathers be able to move so we can fly away from here once he's done here, and I actually gave him feathers here too to preen and to stay warm. So. This one isn't too complicated at all. You just need construction paper. There might be one thing you have to go to the dollar store for, but everything here is super affordable, and it's really fun to do. I gave him some. I gave him some 3D and uh, 3D look to him, 
if you want to make it a little more complicated, but I'll show you how. I'm gonna, it's a better to show than to, to tell. So there's a, a quite bit of a few uh, materials I need. If you need to refer back to this, you can always pause the video and then write them down or get them whenever you want. So we have a few different color shades or colors of uh, construction paper. We have green, brown, orange, yellow, and red, and black. Kind of looks the same, don't you? <laughs> it's like looking in a mirror. Um, whoops, don't fly away. So you want to cut your, sh uh, your shapes. You have brown circle, slightly smaller green circle for the head, excuse me, your feathers. I don't have kids hands, so I just free, uh, free drew this. These are for the feathers. His little duck feet. Remember they're webbed, so I made them look like they're webbed. Um, you have his eyes. Those will be his eyes. Uh, mallards have like brown or reddish kind of uh, eye features, but it's, you can make whatever duck you want. It's your duck. And then I have his eyeballs. And then to end it all off, what else does he need? He needs a mouth. We got his beak. So we're gonna make his beak 3D. Um, we're actually gonna start with the beak. So this is the most complicated thing you'll do with your construction paper. This is how you make it 3D. You cut kind of a long oval shape, like a track field. It kind of looks like a band-aid. It does look like a band-aid, yeah, that's right. And you're going to fold it in half, just like that. And now you can open it just a little bit. We're halfway done. Have your stick of glue. And then you're gonna glue it onto your little tongue. Perfect. Now stick it inside the mouth so you have your beak. And don't forget to draw nostrils on the duck because he needs to breathe. Two thin lines, just like that. And then you would attach it to his face. Actually, I should have made the tongue longer so it looks even funnier, but you can do whatever you want with it. So I'm not gonna glue everything together. I'm just gonna show you what it should look like towards the end. Your two eyeballs, your two, your, your beak. Um, the legs should go to the body. The wings should go. To, uh, the wings should also go to the body. But the most complicated part that I think in, is uh, in this to make the wings actually flat and move. Uh, you're going to want these uh, these pins right here. Not everyone might have these. You might have to go to the dollar store for these. I forget in the moment what they're called. Brads. But, Brads. Thank you, Jessica, for the assist right there. Um, but they uh, they actually split apart like this so that when you put this through the construction paper, you can open it up and then it keeps the wing from uh, detaching and it makes the wing looks like it's moving. Um, if you don't have a hole puncher, you can just use a pen. I use the pen. We don't have to be super clean here. So just find the edge of your duck. Poke a little hole, not too big. I'm gonna do the same thing on my feather, just like that. Take your Brad, shout out if your name is Brad. <laughs> You're going to stick it through, see that? And then carefully split it apart. And there you go. He's waving hi. <laughs> <laughs> right now he only has one wing, so we, the only thing he can do right now is wave at you. But if I was to continue this, finally he would look like the duck we have here. This is Donnie's brother, Drake. Why not? <laughs> We're going with these. Um, and to add a little more 3D depth to it, I had these feathers. They're made of tissue paper, brown tissue paper. They, they're more, uh, um, what's the word? They're, they're, they're more fragile than the construction paper, so they flow in the wind. They kind of look like feathers in the wind. And I also bent his, uh, his legs so they look 3D so we can stand up on its legs so he can walk around or waddle about. And then I, I, the ducks have this little white collar on their neck, sort of look like they're about to wear a suit. And I do the same thing here to add a little more realism. It's up to you, it's your duck. I'm not gonna tell you how, to, how you should be creative and how to make your own creations. I'd love to see what you guys do with this. Um, 
I really like the element of the free moving wings so that Donnie could fly. Whoops, I'll pick that up later. And if they do, you do happen to make a duck, you yeah. can um, email us at sigreenbelteducation at gmail.com and we'd love to see pictures of your ducks. Exactly, I'd love to. I, I want to see creations of all the past story times too. So the same email address that Jessica just gave you. So, after all that, I think we are finally done learning about Donnie and his family. Go to Willowbrook Park, see all the ducks waddling about, and and tell and then share with your friends. Ducks are, are uh, I've, I've definitely learned a lot through this program, and I hope you do too.